The Fiat 500X has been with us for five years now, and for those who love the quirky and cheeky looks of the 500 city car, it's perhaps been the obvious choice for a compact SUV. This is the new 500X Sport, and it aims to add a little bit more athleticism to that popular design. Hello and welcome to Italy, where we're amongst the first to test the new Fiat 500X Sport. And I have to say, it's a reasonably good looking thing, isn't it? I know some people aren't big fans of crossovers and soft roaders and you know they generally have a bit of disdain to them but the fact of the matter is that people quite like the high driving position and the stylish nature of them and I have to say the 500X has always been one of the most eye-catching of course because it has that very ovular flamboyant character to it which you know in an era where we're all about creases the curve is very rarely celebrated. This obviously takes some design cues from the Fiat 500, but more specifically for this sport model, we have some much sportier architecture. There's a more aggressive front bumpers, there's new sporty LED lights, the rear profile has been reworked, and you now get a set of reasonably snazzy 19-inch alloy wheels, which also have a few colour options available to them. Factor in a few more vibrant tones and some graphite grey trim, and I have to say, the overall look is pretty good. Perhaps a bit cutesy for the most masculine amongst us, maybe, but I think it's certainly refreshing to look at in comparison to some of its more, maybe, pedestrian competitors. Okay, so it's sport by name, but what about sport by nature? Under the bonnet is a familiar 1.3 litre Firefly engine, producing 148 brake horsepower and 270 newton metres of torque. Now, mechanically, give or take, it's pretty much identical to what we've seen throughout the Fiat 500X range. But what this car has is slightly reworked suspension, reworked steering, which is supposedly there to reduce understeer, and also lower suspension. It's 13 millimetres lower than standard. But what do those mechanicals actually translate into when you're sat behind the wheel? Well, of course, it retains its nice high driving position, which obviously crossover customers crave, but that tightened up suspension actually means there's a little bit less body roll than before. It means that it's a bit more compliant, a bit more composed through the corners. I mean, don't go thinking it's some sports car, but I have to say it feels a little tighter and a little more focused on what it's doing. There's less seesawing about. Now on these silky smooth roads in Italy, it's really hard to assess actually whether that small sporting suspension gives you less compliance over bumps and things, but back home we'll have to check that out. Generally speaking, I think it's fine. With the few potholes we've hit here, I think it's more to do with those larger alloy wheels that sends a slight shudder through the cabin. But like I say, when we get home, we'll get a real idea of what it's like on British roads. As mentioned, there were changes to the steering. I think generally the car still lacks feel. It's not a driver's car. It's not an R bath and actually, calls for a 500 XR bath, something I think would sell quite well, have been flat out denied by Fiat. It's not the most intuitive thing to drive in terms of driving dynamics, but then maybe nor should it be. The steering weight is very light, but it's ideal for going around town where this car will spend most of its life. When it comes to engine performance, I have to say the 1.3 is reasonably eager. There's a little bit of turbo lag, but that 270 newton meters of torque comes on song quite low in the rev range, and it surges you on quite nicely. And that performance gets to the front wheels via a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. And I have to say, it's pretty silky smooth when left to its own devices. You can barely notice the gear changes, and in, in that regard, the refinement's really good. Put your foot down, demand a bit much for it, and it can be a little bit hesitant on upshifts. Downshifts is a little better, but I have to say, you put it in manual mode and take full control yourself, and the car is perfectly compliant in that regard. It's not the most sporting car in terms of performance, but I think you'll find a 0 to 62 mile an hour of 9.1 seconds and a top speed of 124 mile an hour is pretty adequate in a family SUV. Turning our attention to the inside, and it has that same characterful interior that all of the 500 family have. You get this really nice grey fascia, the 500 insignia. There's also some nice standard equipment, including the seven inch touchscreen infotainment display here, which I will say actually is a little small by today's standards in a lot of cars in this class. But the system, the Uconnect system, is actually pretty easy to use, and it comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you prefer those operating systems on your smartphone. You get a nice flat bottom steering wheel with some Alcantara and contrasting stitching just to give you a hint of sportiness in here. And also I have to say the seats are quite well bolstered in here for a family car. 
In the rear, you'll find seating for three, and whilst headroom can be a little bit restrictive, legroom is actually not too bad at all. It's a similar story in the boot with a 350 litre capacity, which doesn't make it the smallest in the class, but it's certainly not the largest either. We all know the compact SUV market is oversaturated with more options than you can possibly shake a stick at. But if you're looking for something a bit characterful, something different, and something that's going to stand out from the crowd, the Fiat 500X Sport is certainly worth considering. Sure, there's more dynamic cars in the things like the Mazda CX-3, and there's more sensibly trousered machines like the Seat Arona. But again, to stand out, to have something a bit quirky, and maybe something that you grow a bit more of an attachment to than simply an appliance, the 500X Sport is worth checking out. Thanks very much for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews, visit www.insidelane.co.uk.